to our online seminar. In today's online seminar, uh, we'll focus on seven steps to sustainability and introduction to eco schools. And today we're very lucky because we have two excellent experts with a lot of experience. So just before we start, I would ask you, just before I will introduce the experts, I would ask you to keep some rules in our online seminar. So first of all, please keep the chat for questions only. So I know that you all want to say hi to each other and hi from your country, and this is great, but I would please ask you uh, when the experts will start to speak, uh, please keep the chat only for questions. And why is it so? Because we will collect your questions, we want to be able to see them. So if everyone in the chat are posting thank you uh, or hi from somewhere, then it's not easy for us to see the questions, okay? See if you have a comment maybe to share about uh, a similar experience in your school or an appreciation uh, or something, then this is no problem. But let's keep, um, let's keep the chat for questions and comments that are related to the topic. Okay, so thanks a lot. And um, one last... Uh, comment please don't use capital letters uh, in the chat because this is also a bit disturbing for us to uh, to see what it, where is the relevant information if you have a question if you have a comment and of course needless to say I respect peers and experts and of course if you agree with what the experts say uh, then it's excellent there is no need to comment in the chat okay or yes or thank you because you are 166 and imagine that everyone will com com comment yes, thank you, okay? Then it will be again difficult to uh, find your, your questions and your comments about the content, which is what we're interested in. So uh, without further uh, hesitation, I will pass um, the microphone and the video to our experts. And uh, today our experts, as you can see, are Nicole, Andreu and Pramod Kumar Sharma. And uh, while I stop sharing my screen and they will share their presentation, I would also tell you a couple of words about them and how lucky we are to have them on board. So, Nicole, I'm <clears throat> sharing, I stopped sharing my screen. You can share yours. And while you're sharing, your screen, I would like to introduce um, Pramod and Nicole. So uh, Pramod Kumar Sharma is a senior director of education in the FEE since 2018. He's responsible for FEE's education division, consisting of programs, eco-schools, learning about forests, and young reporters for environment. Previously, he worked with FEE's members in India, Center for Environmental Environment Education, where among other responsibilities, he directed the Eco Schools program in India. Nicole Andreu is the International Eco, School, Eco Schools Coordinator at the Foundation for Environmental Education, FEE, as mentioned before. She has been with FEE since 2015, working with the program's implementation and coordination in 68 eco schools countries, so really all over the globe. She's a project manager for STEM projects uh, and coordinates international schools. So we're very happy to have Nicole and Pramod here, Pramod here with us. And uh, without further speaking, uh, Please go ahead, uh, Nicole and Pramod, if you want to share also your camera, you can do that. Thank you, Alex. Uh, can you just confirm you can hear me well? Uh, Alex, can you just confirm that you can yes, hear Nicole, me? Yes, Nicole, we can hear you. Okay, fantastic. Uh, I will keep my camera off, maybe I'll just say hello, <laughs> and then I'll turn it off, uh, but just to keep the connection stabilized. So, hi everyone. 
maybe I'll turn it on uh, back later. Okay, so thanks uh, again, uh, Alex, for uh, introducing us. Uh, today we'll be, uh, yeah, introducing you to the EcoSchools program. Um, and uh, so we want to talk a little bit about uh, our organization and um, uh, and, uh, and the methodology behind the EcoSchools program that uh, celebrated 25 years uh, last year in 2019. Uh, so before I start with the presentation, we want you to be part of this. Uh, so I would uh, encourage everyone to go to www.menti.com. Uh, you can actually see it at the top of your screen, if you can see my cursor, uh, menti.com. Uh, and then use the code at the top of the screen, that is 167169. Um, and this way you can, um, in fact, um, sorry, is this like, yeah, so you can uh, participate uh, in, the, in the conversation. Great. So if you can press the heart, then we know that you're already there. Uh, just to also introduce you to the uh, heart and the, and the cat emoji. So the heart emoji is to let us know that everything is going in the right pace. Uh, but you can also press uh, the cat to let us know that we can uh, slow that we should slow down. Um, I just want to make sure that my screen is still sharing. Uh, if someone can confirm, because I can, I'm experiencing some issue here. Uh, can you see my screen? Okay. Yeah, okay. Okay, great. Great, fantastic. Thank you so much for confirming. Um, so uh, I'll just start uh, to uh, talk to you about the EcoSchools program. Uh, there will be chance to go back to Mentimeter later on. Um, so um, EcoSchools is uh, one of five uh, environmental education programs at the Foundation for Environmental Education. Uh, we're based in Denmark. We, in fact, uh, started in Denmark in 92. Um, and uh, the Foundation for Environmental Education at the moment has over 100 member organizations in 79 countries uh, around the world. Uh, and in the, the main aim of the organization is to promote sustainable development uh, through these uh, programs. Uh, these programs are um, either school based or eco labels uh, as we um, separate them so the first uh, three that you see the first column uh, that is uh, eco schools fee eco campus learning about forests and young reporters for the environment these are our school based programs um, of course we'll elaborate on eco schools today uh, learning about forests focuses on outdoor learning outdoor education and young reporters for the environment uh, focuses on uh, the development of uh, leadership and journalistic skills uh, for students um, of different ages. And then we have the Blue Flag program and the Green Key program that are uh, eco labels, uh, in the first case for uh, beaches, marinas. You've probably seen them around uh, Europe a lot. Uh, and the Green Key program that, um, that is a certification for uh, different types of accommodation. Um, so just to uh, get to know you a little bit better, to see who we have with us, uh, I've already seen in the chat that uh, some of you are part of EcoSchools, uh, but we want to kind of uh, get a better idea uh, who we have with us today. So again, go to menti.com. Nicole, to sorry to disturb. I can, see uh, some vote. people are complaining about the sound. So um, the settings are at the max. But uh, I would suggest maybe, Nicole, if you can just raise your voice a little bit or speak directly to the microphone. But uh, for all participants that have problems with the sound, just make sure that the volume in your computer is on the max. Because in terms of settings, um, in terms of settings of the online seminar, the volume of the presenter uh, is on maximum. So Nicole will increase her. voice if possible a bit
Nicole, Nicole, are you with us? Yes. Can you continue to speak? Better now? Much better now. Thank you. Uh, Please, oh. uh, for the yes. for our uh, learners, is it better uh, now? Can you hear, hear Nicole? Nicole, can you say something, please? Okay, fantastic. Uh, yes, so I'll just uh, continue by saying that the, there is also a small percentage of people who have ne not heard about the EcoSchools program before. So that's great. <laughs> we'll get, get to tell you a little bit about it. Great. Um, so um, before I go into the specifics, I, I want to uh, tell you that uh, we're, we're proud to see that there's uh, over 19 million students involved with our program today uh, and over 59,000 schools that are registered and uh, over 17,000 that are, are awarded. I will talk a little bit about the Green Flag Award in a little bit. Um, and our program receives a great amount of support at the national level. Um, either by governments, uh, the, the local government, municipalities, and so on. And uh, we also offer teacher training uh, for, the, for the teachers that are uh, involved with the EcoSchools program. Uh, you can see where in the world we are. As I mentioned earlier, we started in Denmark. So naturally, uh, Europe was the, the first continent where, where we started spreading. Uh, but then slowly, uh, but steadily, we uh, spread around the world. Uh, so the um, uh, orange dots that you can see are the countries where we have a national operator for EcoSchools. That means a member organization running our program. And the green dots are the, the countries where we also have the third level education program, which is uh, FEE EcoCampus. Um, so moving uh, forward a little bit, on the context of, uh, of the methodology of eco-schools um, and, and which direction we're, we're going towards. So there's di some different definitions of uh, what a curriculum is, uh, which we wanted to bring in in explaining the, the methodology. So we, we're talking about a whole institution uh, curriculum where we see the, the, the vision and the values and the uh, mission uh, of, the, of, a, of an educational institution or of a school. Uh, where there is different discussions about um, what, what students should learn. Uh, then we have the learning for action or action-oriented curriculum, where we see um, what, what students can experience and what they can learn from these experiences that they can use later uh, as, as adults or later in life. Uh, and then we have the definition of the subject curriculum, um, that mostly connects to specific goals, uh, content, uh, uh, strategy, uh, different resources. Um, and we can generally say that the outcome of these three um, approaches, let's say, is, is the same. Um, to develop different uh, skills, to develop knowledge and attitudes. Uh, but within EcoSchools, we really want to focus on the second uh, definition, and that is the uh, action-oriented curriculum. We want students to experience firsthand what they learn, uh, and we want to um, bring learnings that happen outside the classroom inside the classroom and, and discuss then and elaborate and, and further understand, uh, get more, a more holistic perspective on the issues that are around us. Um, then we, uh, we wanted to look at a little bit at the um, uh, different design elements of project-based learning. This uh, graph was taken by PBL Works, that is working ex extensively with project-based learning. And they've identified these different elements that each project should include uh, in order to achieve quality project-based learning. So th this is uh, sustained inquiry, authenticity, which means real, real life experiences, um, student voice and choice, reflecting, being able to um, uh, critically assess a situation, revise it, create a public product, uh, and then always having a, a challenging uh, problem and a challenging question. And uh, as I move forward to the uh, seven steps of EcoSchools, which is the main component of the EcoSchools program, this is the methodology and the pedagogy that we follow. 
you will see that a lot of the elements of quality project-based learning are reflected within um, the seven steps. So uh, I will briefly describe um, what happens at a school when they join the EcoSchools program. Uh, the first step is to form an eco-committee. Uh, this eco-committee is ultimately a group of people that has to be 50% students. Uh, and we say 50% students because we want to make sure that uh, every activity is student-led uh, or every action always has um, the, the, the voice of students being heard. Um, and, uh, at, but at the same time, we want to see different members of the community or of the school community being involved in order to better facilitate uh, the students' ideas, support them in the process. Uh, and these people could be teachers uh, like yourselves, it could be um, other supporting teaching staff, it could be volunteers from the community, uh, it could be um, uh, the school management. And the school management is actually very important because once uh, they buy in, in a way, that uh, really helps support the, the students with their actions. Um, the next step is uh, carrying out an environmental review, or as we uh, broadened it uh, recently, a sustainability audit. Um, and that is ultimately a review of different themes um, that could be energy, water, um, global citizenship, climate change, um, and so on. There is currently 12 themes available within EcoSchools. And uh, when we say review, we mean um, ultimately to reflect or ask the, the crucial questions, the critical questions to understand what the baselines are at the school level at the very beginning of an eco-schools project. Um, so for instance, what is the energy consumption at the school level and what can we do to reduce that? Um, this really helps set the framework. This is a kind of the foundation of, of the process. Um, when, the, when they carry out that the sustainability audit, it is also um, the teacher's turn to take the lead into linking to the curriculum. So all the subjects that have been identified as key areas within the sustainability audit can then be uh, linked to learning inside or outside the classroom. Uh, once uh, that happens, um, then an action plan needs to be in place. Uh, so the eco committee uh, comes up with the key areas that they want to focus on. They usually choose uh, three or four topics that they want to address during the year. Uh, and they make sure that the, there are um, activities that are time bound that can be measured uh, in place. Um, and this is important because they set the goal in a way uh, and they can always come back to it, reflect uh, I'll move on to monitoring and evaluation. If they have the baseline from the sustainability audit, uh, that means that they can uh, actually then go back and track the progress. And if, they, uh, if there is any progress, may, maybe they can uh, actually see that uh, uh, they have to adapt their goals um, and, and adjust their action plans. Uh, informing and involving is also very uh, important because that is how um, students uh, really engage the community, the school community. Uh, they need to make sure that all the events are um, communicated, that they bring uh, members of the community on board, that they talk to their local municipality, um, and that they kind of create an eco-schools community around their school grounds. Uh, and the last step, which is uh, ultimately a synthesis of the previous six steps, or the learning journey, is producing an eco-code. Uh, an eco-code could be anything from um, a motto, a slogan, um, a poem, a song, as long as it really reflects the journey, as long as it focuses on the different uh, themes that the committee has worked on um, and, uh, and really reflects the values of, uh, of the process. Um, we also uh, align our program with the different uh, environmental education objectives and uh, education for sustainable development features. So I'll, I'll briefly talk about these connections. Um, so within the uh, environmental review, we see how um, students are more aware about uh, the, the different subjects and how they perform uh, at the school level. Um, 
then uh, when we talk about the, uh, the action plan and how students are engaging uh, in, in planning, but also monitoring their actions and uh, at the same time linking to the curriculum, we um, help build knowledge. So there is a basic understanding about uh, issues that is created through these different steps. Um, when we look at the EcoCode, um, this is to help uh, kind of acquire a set of values that they want to um, uh, acquire, um, the, how concerned they are about the environment, uh, how they can actively participate in uh, improving different um, uh, situations and, and solve different problems. Um, then uh, again, with uh, the action plan, uh, different skills are um, uh, developed to both identify and solve environmental prob problems. And then within uh, the eco-committee formation, we see the participation of students, how they uh, come together to decide collectively, uh, democratically, um, and then, yeah, collectively work towards solving the problems. Um, and then when we look at the features of uh, Education for Sustainable Development, uh, again, we see that um, issues are uh, local and that makes them relevant. Um, then the, also issues are applicable. So uh, they are experienced in everyday life and uh, therefore, again, they become uh, relevant. Um, it is um, the, the eco code, for example, is uh, value driven. Uh, and that means that uh, there are shared values um, underpinning sustainable development. Uh, among the, the eco committee members and the greater school community. Um, we see critical thinking and problem solving coming uh, through action plan, um, action planning, <laughs> uh, and that also helps build confidence uh, among students to, uh, to solve the different issues, but also talk about them, um, reflect on them collectively, but also bring them home and discuss with their uh, parents and so on. Um, and then uh, again, the participation uh, on in decision making, uh, that's also very important when, uh, when, when the eco committee comes together. Uh, now we want your opinion about the, what you've heard. So uh, we want to know from what you've heard, uh, which step do you think is most critical, most important for learning to take action? Uh, Pramod, feel free to come in to comment. Okay, we'll uh, just leave some time. I can see that you've already started voting and you can see the results on your screen. A lot of people think that uh, action planning is most important for learning to take action. Um, and the next one is linking to the curriculum. There's no uh, wrong or right answer. We, we think that all steps are, uh, are critical, but it's we uh, kind of want you to reflect on um, what is the one thing that might carry uh, a little bit more weight. They develop the action plan. Uh, they reflect on uh, the other steps uh, in terms of the way the audit has been done what they have identified the problem is and then they develop uh, that what could be the course of action it is important but as nicole said that uh, in our view and our experience that uh, different steps develop different skills and action plan definitely develop the skill for uh, seeing the future and take acting on it and uh, while they are acting on it uh, as part of monitoring and evaluation they it's also important that they learn that uh, how progress or the change takes place in that area or the issue but uh, i won't undervalue the uh, the step one which is the formation of eco committee because there they get the, the skills to work together and work as a team Um, so I uh, also just changed the slide. The next question is, which do you think is also the most challenging? 
So we we saw that the, you thought you felt that action planning was very important uh, for learning to take action. But the, so as a teacher, from a teacher's perspective, uh, which of, uh, of these steps do you think I is think most challenging uh, to implement? The curriculum uh, is a challenge because it it involves uh, integration of many learning outcomes out of coming out of different subjects and requires collaboration uh, of the teacher. Uh, action plan, yes, uh, might be difficult because uh, you need permissions and uh, many of the actions uh, that are required to resolve an issue uh, might require uh, resources, funding, which might not be there in the school or maybe beyond the ability of the students or scope of the school to take action. But uh, uh, based on my experience, and I would say that uh, action plan uh, is also uh, and important because development of action plan and understanding uh, that what is required to take action is also an important learning. And second, informing and involving. Okay, so we'll move forward. Thank you for your answers. Thank you, uh, Nicole. Uh, so two uh, critical things that are there at FE in all the programs is that all programs like eco schools are solution oriented. We are not uh, talking about theory and uh, somebody in the chat also commented that it is solution oriented and eco school is not uh, talking about uh, learning or just getting information but it's talking about what we can do and uh, the other part is that it is talking about positive action so we are not talking about anxiety despair or what is the problem but we are looking at what we can do and we call that as handprint competence handprint competence is basically uh, the competence or the ability to take action and this can only be developed by acting learning. It cannot be developed by giving lectures in the classroom. And uh, it, if you want to create a belief that we can, as a child or as anybody in the school can make a difference through individual, uh, it impacts self-efficacy, which is basically the belief that my abilities are, uh, I have the ability to make that change and I am internally motivated to take action. And also uh, it symbolizes positive action as I was talking about. The most important point is that we need to understand as educators that experiences and actions are very close linked. So the kind of experiences that we get uh, of solving problem very early in life determine the kind of actions that we take in future. So and that experiences basically is the simulation of problem solving in the real life world. And the, the basic principles is that there is always a purpose. We are not doing it for academic reason. There is a purpose to taking action and a student should be able to understand the purpose and relate to it. It is reflective. It is going to the individual, I. It is not about what others should do, but it is about what I should do and how I should act. It is always negotiated. It's not about teacher telling the students that this is what you have to do. But it's discussion that happens between students, discussion between teachers and students, discussion between eco committee and the management of what best we can do in the current situation. And then people understand that why and what criteria we use to arrive at that discussion. It is critical, uh, which is important uh, because there are different meanings that we associate with learning of the content. And it is critical in the sense that uh, it takes that theory or the learning into action. It also uh, helps that uh, active learning basically prepare uh, or simplify the complexity of the real life situation that we live in and how does uh, this linkages are there between a problem and somebody called it wicked problem. Uh, then active learning is also driven by situation where the need is or what criteria we uh, use and then 
based on that we establish the learning task and the most important is engagement what i call is that we should always ask uh, who is thinking if the teacher is thinking and asking students to do the activities that is not engagement it is children who, or the students who should be thinking and taking action next slide nicole so uh yeah, so now we just uh, wanted to give you some examples of uh, handprint actions. Um, and these are featured in a publication we released uh, two years ago now um, on positive actions for the sustainable development goals that you can uh, find on our website. Uh, you'll get the links a little bit later. So we'll start with this uh, case study from uh, Northern Ireland and Madagascar, where um, uh, we basically wanted to bring two schools together to study the same um, issue. And that was the theme of water. Uh, so they, they kind of ran a little bit of a twinning project, uh, as, as you would call it, um, to study the theme of water. And while the students in uh, Northern Ireland were trying to, find, uh, to fight uh, uh, their consumption, their water consumption, they realized that the, the problem in Madagascar was completely different. Uh, it was actually about uh, having access to water. Um, so that, that experience alone and that discussion that the children had from the uh, two different schools in Madagascar and Northern Ireland um, brought uh, yeah, further knowledge on the issue and uh, further perspective, I would say, um, on uh, how the same topic can be uh, yeah, per perceived very differently uh, or tackled with very differently in different contexts. Uh, so what happened with uh, this project was that the, the, uh, the school in uh, Northern Ireland decided to raise funds uh, to develop, a, to build a borehole for the extraction of clean water in Madagascar. And in fact, that, um, that borehole didn't only bring uh, water to that specific school, but to the entire village uh, where the, the school was located. Uh, and that taught them uh, empathy and uh, really collaboratively uh, solving a problem and talking about it and reflecting um, on uh, ways to solve it. Um, then we have another um, case from Uganda uh, where students decided that, the, again, the, it's, a, it's a water project, so they decided that they wanted to install water tanks uh, to, to save water and improve the sanitary conditions at the school. And by saving water and by having uh, water on the school grounds meant that the girls of a certain age could stay in school uh, while normally they would drop out. Um, so that, uh, yeah, you can also see it on the slide that the um, uh, figure of uh, girl enrollment specifically increased significantly. Um, then we have a, a waste project from India where uh, a school uh, was working on uh, waste reduction and uh, also uh, segregate, segregating their waste, uh, not only at the school level, but also at the community level. Um, and then the, they also um, segregated organic waste that they could use as compost, um, and also the, used uh, the citric peels that they could uh, actually collect from the organic waste and turn it into a cleaning product uh, for cleaning the, the school toilets. So this is like very, very creative thinking on behalf of the students and solving a, a number of uh, different issues within, within one project. Um, then uh, another project from, from the USA where uh, the Eco Committee here decided that they uh, wanted to contribute to uh, restoring biodiversity in their um, uh, local river. Where, so they started uh, raising salmon eggs uh, for two months and they, then they released them uh, in the river. Uh, and then the last one is a food project. Uh, we talked about this also last week for those of you who were at the ambassadors conference. Um, so uh, this, uh, this project investigated um, uh, local and seasonal food, uh, how food is produced, uh, how we procure organic products, uh, the meat consumption at the school level. Um, and then what was amazing about this project was that the students decided that they wanted to bring it home. Uh, so they wanted to audit their, um, uh, well, their theme of food at home. So they wanted to see 
um, how much uh, meat, for example, their parents buy or what kind of products they buy. Um, and they uh, wanted to improve um, food waste both at the school level and at the household level. What kind of research has been done on eco school program and its impact? And then a little bit about uh, what we've learned uh, from research. I'm passing again to Pramod. There is an improvement of academic uh, skills and the skills that uh, basically inform skill attitudes and values. And this is basically uh, more uh, there in, in form of leadership uh, the students take because part of the, the eco committee and then collaboration they have to work with a lot of stakeholders, negotiation, investigation, problem solving that is an important which is critical which in also involves critical thinking and higher order thinking skills. And based on that, uh, taking decisions using different criteria and coming out with those criteria to take decision, which is an important life skill and transferable skill that is uh, 21st century, where we have to take decisions every day and every time in our life. The second uh, set of uh, uh, research show that it increases uh, knowledge, and the knowledge doesn't increase just by uh, reading, but it is increased by knowing different technologies, but doing different th things, and then seeing that what, uh, how much waste they are creating, how to segregate those waste. It, it also says uh, in terms of climate change, uh, because ultimately that projects uh, make people to children to go back and look into, uh, uh, do the audit and go deep into the content of uh, this issue. And, and the sustainable transport uh, is another area where we saw that there is a high increase in uh, knowledge that what kind of transport children take to the school and the importance of those. Next, Nicole. And uh, the most important, uh, it, the research shows that there has been change in behavior. And I would like to highlight that the behavior changes because of change in attitude, which is brought about by the transformative process like seven step. Attitude doesn't change overnight. Attitude changes a constant regular engagement. And uh, we expect that when the children is there, a uh, child is there for 12 years in a school, he or she should be continuously engaged so that they develop positive attitude towards uh, developing agency to take action and then the self-efficacy and locus of control which is basically the motivation they should uh, develop in themselves to act for environment and it's not for others that they do it and uh, the impact of behavior change is in form of increasing civic participation in the school level which is basically engaging with the schools uh, and example given that they take it at the home level in, in the food of uh, uh, food project it also increases uh, opinion leadership because they learn to express themselves and ask people and influence other people. And this is the important uh, uh, outcome of the project uh, of environmental education objective, which is called participation. So opinion leadership is, uh, is a training and participation in a democratic way. Then uh, skill of language because they have to articulate, they have to talk to each other and inform the involved, they have to uh, present their outcome and then as part of eco court also they have to do it then it brings in the sense of community and also is by nature is inclusive it gets everybody involved next so we would like to uh, see uh, based on the ideas that we shared and the uh, would like to know what uh, no, I, we understand the schools are closed, but uh, what is the next uh, idea of the project that you have or what you are thinking about uh, doing whenever the schools reopen or uh, children can do from home? You can go to menti.com, uh, enter the code 167169 and enter your idea of kind of project. Eco school, I would say, is a program. It's a, it's entirely thing. So yeah, for some uh, teachers which are not part of eco school program, the it could be a project to get eco school in as an idea into uh, their school. Again, sustainability, uh, sustainability is a big, big word. What aspect of sustainability you are talking about? Yes. Uh, Explore natural habitat as school, and this is an important and ex uh, excellent example of the kind of project because, uh, in my belief, the op it increases observation and it brings children closer to uh, be able to see what and value what is there uh, in their school grounds. 
blue economy yes uh, excessive food consumption uh, okay so reducing that teaching recycling at school i would like to highlight uh, teaching recycling is a good idea but then we should also focus on reducing that we should not be able need to have recycled and that cannot happen in short time i understand but uh, uh, i see that a lot of effort goes into recycling but not into reducing consumption and uh, eliminating the need to recycle Saving energy, all-time favorite uh, topic of the schools. Waste management is also uh, important. Planting trees, I think that's important because that uh, uh, creates a value of uh, doing something for the nature. Uh, and uh, also it is connected to the solving the problem of climate change. And uh, for the future, clean environment. Okay, and that's a clean environment is a big word because the way we understand and articulating that uh, in different ways would be interesting exercise in itself. Together for our raise awareness. Okay, yes, that uh, that is also an important uh, objective for environmental education that we should learn, but then we should also spread. And we like, uh, I think we can go to the next slide because we already have around 14 minutes uh, left so that we need to have some time for question and answers. So what do you think of this seminar? Uh, hmm? All are saying that they learned something new that uh, you've been teaching at my school. Thank you for that uh, positive feedback. You can type in that uh, 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 the chat box that what important thing that you learned that you can use in your school. So most of the teachers are finding uh, that they learned something new in the presentation. That's uh, good feedback and. Uh, some what useful uh, to that uh, extent. Uh, we can go to the next slide, uh, Nicole. So this is important now. We would like to uh, uh, understand that what uh, one thing that you will remember from this seminar. important i think handprint uh, and that's a very good concept i would say handprint because it takes uh, looks at future in a positive way and is not look at the footprint which is a negative way of looking what problem we are creating in environment but it looks at creating solution yes sustainability is a big word and uh, important also because it is it's the way of life thank you eco school yes that's coming out the one big part Clean water, that's a good uh, topic. Climate change, collaboration is an important. Environmental uh, action or conservation happens with uh, collaboration. Education happens with collaboration. It cannot then be done by an individual or in isolation. Sustainability is a collaborative concept. And then uh, seven steps. Planning, yes. Planning is an important exercise. Sustainable development goals as a big work. Ah, I like that word behavior. Ultimately, we have to reflect and see what impact we are doing and how we are doing. So what Um, thank you for your answers. So uh, we'll uh, 
Okay, th thank you, Pramod. Uh, there might be some delay, but uh, yeah, I, um, I hope you can hear me. Uh, so just a little bit about uh, uh, our background and our partners. Um, so we're uh, partners with uh, UNESCO and we're a key partner for the implementation of UNESCO's Global Action Program on Education for Sustainable Development. Um, we've been recognized by UN Environment or previously known as UNEP uh, uh, as a leading program for the achievement of, S uh, of uh, ESD. Um, and then we also have uh, some corporate partners that uh, support the um, implementation of uh, different projects. Um, here you can uh, see how you can follow us, how you can uh, find us online. Uh, we have a Facebook page, a Twitter page, uh, in, an Instagram page, um, and then at the bottom you will also find the sign up link to our newsletter. Um, but uh, you can, uh, once you go on our website, I'll, I'll show you our website in, in a little bit, uh, then um, an automatic pop-up will come so you can just uh, sign up for our newsletter there. Um, I'll leave this on for more seconds and take a picture of it. And then uh, you're also welcome to uh, contact us uh, at any point if you have any questions or if you want to be connected to your national operator. Um, but you can actually also find your national office of eco schools uh, at this page. Uh, so it's uh, ecoschools.global slash national dash offices. Um, so on, when you go on the website, you can definitely find this uh, page. Um, so if you are interested in running the EcoSchools program at your school, then you get in touch with Thank one of our national offices and for then you can an with the program. Yes, yeah, sorry. Please um, go ahead. As I said earlier, we're mostly present in, in Europe, so there's high chances that we're uh, present in your country. And if not, just get in touch with us anyway. And then some more useful links for you. Yes, absolutely. We're going to share this link uh, links uh, in a second uh, in the chat. Yeah, and I, I would uh, I was just like gonna say to that pick you, up a question going that to one of our participants has raised. Uh, what is the vocational perspective for students who finish eco schools? And of what age are pupils that participate in eco schools activities? Um, so uh, eco school starts at the kindergarten level uh, and goes all the way up through university. Um, so uh, we have kindergartens, primary, secondary schools, and then once uh, students move on to um, uh, third level education, then there is the FEE Eco Campus program, which is ultimately the eco schools equivalent for uh, tertiary education. Um, but then uh, the program is also Thank implemented you so much. Uh, Thank you within vocational you. training uh, And as you can see, I've posted in so, the chat uh, the various we, we are present and the program and is available for different levels And just to let you all know, the presentation and the recording and the various links will be shared as well in the twin space. So thank you uh, to both our presenters and thank you to our participants uh, for posting interesting questions, for checking out later all the resources that we shared here. And of course, going and checking the Echo Schools and the FEE websites uh, to find materials that also suitable for your schools, for your pupils, uh, also vet pupils. So Alexia, I invite you to go and check for information and you might find something that is suitable for your class. Thank you everyone and have an excellent evening.